Do you think Rodgers is done? I don't know if he's done. Like, I could see him being done just because it doesn't seem like they really want to build around him. What's up, everybody? It's he- We are finally here for another episode of Not Just Football with Cam Hayward. I know some of you are tired, sad, a little bit mad about how the season ended for us, but we got a great show. Hayden, you ready to get started today? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, back from my trip from your house slash studio. Uh, got a little sinus infection, but we're, we're fighting through it today. How you doing? We're all fighting through it. Uh, you know, we're, we're coming from, up from the depths of despair, uh, dealing with the season is finally over. Um, but uh, there was football last night. Um, you watched more than me. I don't think anybody really wanted to watch after that score, but uh, man, it was a, it was a game. <laughs> I, I guess you could call it that. Uh, 65, seven dogs. Um, I mean, what can we say, man? Georgia's the best program in the country and they've been the best team over the last two years. Uh, I can't imagine how you felt though, as an Ohio state fan, knowing you had them on the ropes and thinking if you guys get to that game, dude, that's another natty for sure. Cause I, I, I still can't believe Michigan lost to them, but as a Buckeye, how'd you feel after seeing that score? I know you didn't watch. So first we have to give shout out to one of our best friends, they, uh, Sean Ramsey, um, we call him Ziggy for short. He is a big Bulldogs fan. He went there and we've heard throughout the years, you know, we've always tried to say Big Ten was better than the SEC. And now he's finally going to have his day. Uh, and, you know, you tip your cap to him as an Ohio State fan. Man, we had an opportunity to win a natty this year. Um, you know, to know it came down to a field goal. Um, but you can't just say it's a field goal because I feel like there were some missed opportunities. Um, you know, CJ Stroud played a hell of a game um, going into that game. And so uh, to know that um, watching that score and understanding that the national championship was decided in the semifinal, um, it, it's crazy. And what we were talking about off screen was, you know, folks, get ready for more of this in the college playoff. Um, we're going to get some lopsided scores with 12 teams in it. Um, there's no room around it. Not everybody's going to be ready to play on the college playoff uh, plateau. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of growth, a lot of teams thinking they're ready. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see teams from the Big 12 penalized for a performance like this. Um, you don't want to do that, but who's to say you wouldn't? Because look at what they've done to, you know, this – the rankings of SEC winners. They are always given the benefit of the doubt of having a really good team. And so when you look at the Big 12, they're going to be given the benefit of the doubt that they can't play in the college playoff. (laughs) And so um, that's going to give more opportunities for other teams. But, man, um, no one would have suspected that shellacking last night. No, and I'm curious for you. I I don't think you've ever been beat that bad. Um, but like on the TCU side, what, what, what are you thinking when it's 52 seven midway through the third quarter and you're just getting the break speed off you in the biggest game of your life? Um, and I think you've lost a national championship game, but like I said, not like that. What do you think TCU was thinking yesterday? Like I lost in the national championship my freshman year. Um, and you're just looking for plays to finally go your way. Uh, you're looking for something to change to get going. Um, you're running out of time. And it feels like time is moving super fast because you can't catch back up. Um, and you just got to you gotta find some, you know, something to really hang your hat on. And I don't know if they were ever able to do that. Um, 65 to 7, man, like, oh, man, I don't even know how you go to sleep after that game. Uh, it's going to it's gonna haunt a lot of people. And, um, you know, it's funny now, like, looking at it, We've looked at it through the TCU view, but look at what Georgia has done. Back-to-back championships. Nick Saban's in the crowd. And you see David Pollock talk about, you know, Georgia is the class of the SEC right now. And you could tell it was just eating Saban up. So, you know, it's it, it, it feels like times are changing, but they're not changing enough to get it out of the SEC. I didn't know if you had seen that. 
Saban, I think, once the camera cut from him, choked David Pollock out. Right, there. <laughs> right? Like, he was so angry. You could see the steam coming out of his ears. And I hate to say it, Pollock was right, though. The last two years, Georgia has dominated. I know Bama beat him last year, but, you know, the dogs are the best team in the country right now, and Kirby's probably the best college coach in the country. Yeah, you know, Stetson Bennett has been in, you know, college for over eight years um, and probably trying to apply for another year. Uh, but I think we're going to see what Kirby's about next year. Who's going to be the quarterback going forward? Um, you're losing Jalen Carter, um, who's going to be a top five pick, in my opinion. Um, those are going to be the big factors. Can you sustain and be the, the classes of the SEC? Because now you have a target on your back. It's not just one and one uh, and saying, you know, we were lucky this year. You've won two in a row. You have the target. Tennessee is going to be better. Uh, LSU is going to be better. Uh, Alabama is going to be gunning for you now and for here on out. So I look forward to, you know, the, the rivalry between that. Um, and you know Saban's going to look to get him back somehow. No, that was great. And I think it's got to be I – mean, you got to be proud of Kirby if you're Saban because he was one of your assistants, but also a little frustrated because he almost took this thing from you. Um, yeah. The TCU thing I do want to ask you, I know you got beat 65-7. That's a team, though, had 201 – 200 to one odds to even, I think, get to the playoff. When do you think they'll be able to feel like they did have a successful season? It's going to take some time. Uh, Is it? There's, there's going to be a morning period. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but I think um, when you start to see some of those guys going to the next level um, and start to declare for the draft, um, you got to really think you've done a hell of a job in coaching, um, playing, uh, winning – uh, not even winning the Big 12, but uh, just making it to that point because I think they were unranked going into the season. And so, you know, you you, you scratch and claw um, to get to this point. Um, you know, you look at the UCFs of the world who don't even get the opportunity to do that. You were given an opportunity and you made it to the final, you know, stage. Um, and you never know. Maybe the coach is better for, from this. Um, maybe he understands – uh, the momentum that builds um, always in national championships and, you know, Super Bowls, it's a game of momentum. How can you stack up early and keep putting out good play after good play? Because then it becomes, you know, over surmounting uh, for other teams that aren't used to this. Um, you know, it's nothing saying the big 12 championship doesn't you know, matter, but man, the national championship, there is a lot of different factors that go into it. You get a longer break, uh, it's like a Super Bowl halftime where everybody's talking. Um, but, you know, you got to have your guys up for playing. And, uh, you know, I just think you got to tip your cap the way TCU did it this year. Um, you know, they're going to have some first round talent. They got some guys that are going to play the next level. Uh, but that's not by, you know, um, luck. It's because these guys came ready to to, to work. Uh, they worked their tail off um, and surprised, you know, the country by making it that far. Yeah, and I think Max Duggan didn't even start the year. He wasn't even starting quarterback to start the year off to get to the national championship game. And and I will say this, you know, I don't think Georgia played as good last night as they did against – I mean, I think they played better, excuse me, last night than they did against Ohio State. And mm -hmm. honestly, I think if Michigan had gotten there and Georgia played like that, I don't think Michigan is beating that Georgia team last night. I mean, I think Georgia scored on six of their first possessions, their six, first six possessions, and they just were a buzzsaw. I mean, there was they were ready to play, and they had been in that environment before. Um yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was a beating. It was, that was a beat down. Yes, it was uh, a beat down that, you know, didn't occur in the semifinal. Um, and it just makes you think about the opportunities missed by uh, Ohio State in that semifinal. Yeah, I know. I know you were hurt last night reading that uh, or seeing that score. But um, and you had mentioned morning period earlier. How are you doing after your nine and eight season? You beat the Browns on Sunday, but a little bittersweet. Um, finding out the Dolphins kicked the field goal late um, to win the game and beat the Jets and knock you guys out of the playoffs. All I kept saying was, dang you, Joe Flacco. You couldn't get it done with us one, one time, Joe Flacco. One time. Um, but, you know, that's asking for a Raven to do a Steelers job. And that's, that's not something we're accustomed to. So, um, man, you know, I thought we had a very – you know, good performance. Wasn't perfect, but we were able to get the job done versus the Browns. Um, you know, there was, you know, it was a little chaotic. You, uh, you know, start off, we fumble on the first series. 
uh, just going back and forth. Uh, we, we settled in, um, we're able to get some turnovers, uh, got some scores late, um, win the game 28, 14. Um, and then you're just looking at the score. You're like, damn, it's six, six, you know, you're seeing the bills do their job They're, You know, you, you had no doubt that the bills were going to win that game. Like, I'm sorry, New England, but going into that game, they, they were fighting against way more than just the Bills. You were fighting against the entire country. Um, so, you know, it was really cool to see afterward uh, the kickoff return um, on the first play uh, by the Bills. I thought that was pretty special. Um, and you're seeing more and more uh, great stuff happening for DeMar Hamlin. Um, you know, I think he, he's recovering pretty nicely right now. I think he just got released, which is awesome. Um, but then you turn on and you see that Jets and Dolphins game. And you're like, man, does anybody want to, you know, win this game? Uh, it was, you know, I thought last week the uh, Dolphins, who did they play last week? They played. They played. The Patriots, right? Yeah, they were at the Patriots. Dolphins and Patriots. And yeah. that was pretty ugly to begin with. Uh-huh. And now you look at this game this, this past week, and you're like, man, nobody really wanted to win these games. Um, and so, you know, um, but, you know, there was some, some success throughout the season for us. But, man, we kind of dug ourselves a hole at two and six. And we, we left it up to – uh, other teams doing our jobs for us. And then we get to the end and we're like, man, if we could just get one of those back, it, it changes the outcome and it, it puts us in the playoffs and we're getting ready for a playoff game this week. I'm always curious about this because I know as fans, we do it all the time. But is there a time when you go 9-8 and eight and you miss the playoffs by a game? Like, do you go back and look at the games like, man, we should have won that one. We should have won that one. You know, I think it's easy to say, oh, we should have won that. Um you know, and that's why we play the games. Um, we didn't win them, and we got to own up to it. Uh, but there will be a time where I do look back at the season. I, I like to grade myself individually and work on where I can get better um, and, you know, see where, you know, those little things, my new things add up um, and keeps you out of the playoffs. Um, not saying I'm always going to be perfect, but I'm saying – um, if we're ever going to grow from it, you got to learn from your mistakes and find ways to get, keep getting better. Yeah, I'm curious. When did you find out on Sunday that the Dolphins were going to win that game? Did you find out before your game ended? Uh, I think we had like 18 seconds left. Um, you know, and I'm like, damn, it's nine six. Then I say it's like eleven six or something. Uh huh. And I'm like, oh, well, that just went out the window and. You know, I get a little bit quiet and, you know, start to think of myself about, man, we had an opportunity to, you know, play spoiler in the playoffs. Um, because I felt like we were a team really starting to find our groove and find a way to win. Um, and, you know, I think we're, we're developing a formula that can win. And, you know, uh, w- whether it's running the ball, playing style defense, getting off on third down, um, and, you know, adding up points that way. Uh, because I think in the playoffs you got to have uh, a good running game because you're playing against really good quarterbacks, and the only way to really get them out of their rhythm is to have them be on the sideline a little bit more, to have them uh, have to deal with not being able to go right back out there. Um, and so, you know, these are things I'm going to have to think about for a while. Um, but, man, I'm proud of our guys. I felt like um, there are so – there are so many ways that our season could have gone at two and six. Who, who, who could have thought we even get to this point? Um, you know, I think our guys in our locker room did. Um, and I know our coaches did, but around the, the league and, you know, everybody watching from afar, I don't think a lot of us picked us to even get it to this far. Um, guys had to grow. Guys had to be accountable. Um, but I thought they did that. Um, I watched them practice every single day. I watched guys not, you know, second guess themselves and continue to just keep thriving and trying to get better. Uh, it's not always easy to do that. And a lot of, a lot of teams, they'll start to feel sorry for themselves. And, you know, you'll see those uh, two and 15 teams or, you know, you'll see those astronomical uh, losing seasons. Um, but I, I, I'll commend a lot of our, our guys of getting healthy, uh, getting right and trying to play. 
Well, I think that's the worst part is you start off two and six, but over the last, what is it, eight or nine games, you guys have played really good. And like you said, found a formula, run the ball, play some defense. And really, I think, you know, I know no more victories. You were able to salvage the Tomlin winning season thing. And, and I think you have to be pleased with what you saw over the second half of the season from all the guys. Yeah. You know, I think Mike T will always say he doesn't care about the streak. All it means is he's been in the league a long time. Uh, and I think for us, um, you know, personally, we, 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 we take pride in making sure we don't have losing seasons, but as a, a Steeler organization, we're not measured by losing seasons. We're measured by championships and Super Bowls. Um, and that's always been my, my top goal. Um, you know, and I always think those those goals can coincide by each other. Um, and so, you know, my job's not done. Um, I I got to find ways to keep getting better. Um, and you know, it's uh it's something that you everybody's grasping for. Only one team has a really good season because I feel like everybody is focused on winning the Super Bowl, and only one team can do that. And you have to be willing to live with that consequence. With Caesar Sportsbook and Casino, every bet earns with Caesar Rewards. That means whether you win or lose, you're always earning towards perks like free stays at iconic Caesar properties, game tickets, dining, and more. And if you haven't started yet, here's a reminder. Your first bet is on Caesars. Up to $1,250, download the app with promo code Omaha Full and place your first bet. If you win, congrats. If you don't, you'll get it all back as a free bet. 21 plus only offer valid must be physically present in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming only new users. First $10 wager only must register with eligible promo code bet amount of quality wager returned only if wager is settled as a loss maximum bet credit $1,250 must be used within 14 days of receipt tier credits and reward credits will be added to account within seven days after qualifying wager settles see caesars.com slash promos for full terms void where prohibited know when to stop before you start gambling problem Arizona call 1-800 next step Colorado Auto, Wyoming and Kansas affiliated with Kansas Crossing Casino call 1-800-522-4700 Indiana call 1-800-9 with it Iowa call 1-800-BETS-OFF Louisiana call 1-877-770-STOP licensed through Horseshoe Bossier City in Harris, New Orleans Michigan call 1-800-270-7117 Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania affiliated with Harris, Philadelphia. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-426-2537. Or West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. What do you want to eat tonight? Maybe you want a home-cooked favorite, but don't feel like going to the store. Or you want something exciting and new, but it'd be great to stay in the night. DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever, however you want it. With DoorDash, you're not just getting things you love, but supporting the community you love too. For a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off up to $20 in value. And $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code Hayward. That's 50% off up to $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code Hayward. Don't forget, that's code Hayward for 50% off up to $20 value and $0 delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. I feel like this is a dumb question for you, but like, is this his best coaching job? Because I'm not going to lie. I kind of agree that it might be because two and six, man, that has to be hard to show up to the building every day and still continue to work and think you still have a chance. I think it's, you know, it's, it's all the way you look at it. It, it could be viewed as best coaching job. I think, you know, the year we went 11 and 0 to start the season, how does he not win the coach of the year in that is kind of insane. Like Mike T has never been recognized as the coach of the year. Like really? what are we, he's never won it. Never won it. Wow, I didn't know that. I guess and, I didn't that. you know it, it. It's kind of you know backwards in a approach. You you start to think this dude has you know had some really good teams and you know gotten the best out of a lot of good teams. 
Why has he not been recognized that? I know he's not doing it for that, but I think he's long overdue for all every accolade, you know, Hall of Fame, you name it. Man, that that dude gets the best out of his players. Is that one of those things, though, where like the standard is the standard? So because he set the standard so high that he'd have to do something ridiculous to kind of become the coach of the year, right? The coach of the year normally goes to somebody who maybe came out of nowhere and took a team that wasn't as good. You guys always have expectations. Yeah, you know, I think the expectations are there. Um, but the standard was set before him. You know, that's the crazy part. You, you've had Noel. You've had Cower. Like, the standard was set with them. And he's fighting ghosts. He's not just fighting the coach on the other sideline. He's got to fight um, guys that don't play anymore and so and don't coach anymore. And uh, it's unrealistic, but, man, that's what the standard is. You know, wearing not only, you know, being a Pittsburgh Steeler, but representing the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, from, you know, decades and decades ago. Yeah, it's tough when you're battling you're battling ghosts and you're battling current coaches too, right? Um, all right, well, so I do want to get your opinion as as the seasoned vet of the team. Give me a little rookie report breakdown, and is this Kenny Pickett's team going forward? I thought he showed great improvement over the second half of the season. It seems like he's really getting comfortable. I think this could be uh, Kenny's team, um, but we're not going to put it all on this plate. Um, I like to think that – to be Kenny's team and, you know, be a part of the Steelers, it doesn't have to be Kenny's team. Um, it can be the Steelers. It can be a defense that gets him the ball back and he thrives in those situations. Um, we understand Kenny's going to continue to grow. Uh, he's young and there are there's so much he can grow from and learn from. Um, but, man, he's got a hell of a start on everybody else, um, you know, to know that you've got so many good offensive pieces in place for you uh, for to start your career off is, man, that's half the battle. Most guys are drafting those. You go into next season with a really good running game and a two-headed monster in Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, an offensive line that finally felt like they were all playing cohesive. Um, a uh, wide receiver group that starts with Deontay Johnson and George Pickens, um, tight end group where you have Pat Firemuth, um, Meatball Hayward, um, Zach Gentry. Um, you know, these are all things you can take forward, and you know, you should feel very confident in that. Um, and so going forward, uh, it's about finding out what your wide receivers like, finding out what your O linemen want to do. Um, understanding the pace of the game, understanding rhythm of games. Uh, those are things that come with time. And I felt like he was really starting to understand that. Um, you know, there's a give and take to every play. Tom Brady's best attribute is understanding rhythm. Um, he knows how to pace you to the ball on a, on a, you know, a second and one or third and one to not let you get set up and you're, you're trying to sub. And so he's taking advantage of that. Or he knows how to sit back and, you know, move wide receivers all over the place to find out if you're man or zone. Um, and, you know, playing the game within the game. Um, Aaron Rodgers does a great job of that. I think one time last year uh, we were playing him and, you know, Mike T had to call a timeout because Aaron was just so good at that. These are all little things that come into play as you become an older quarterback in this league. And, you know, I think Kenny has that hunger to be the next great Steelers quarterback. And, you know, we're going to give him every opportunity to do that. I'm glad you mentioned Meatball Hayward, man. Definitely picked up his snap count, I feel like, by the end of the year. Made a nice little play Sunday, a couple nice plays on Sunday. You got to be pretty proud of his rookie year. I mean, six-round draft picks are not not all a lot is expected of them. And I thought Connor handed himself well this year. Yeah, you know, Meatball Hayward, uh, sh Shrimp Hayward, uh, Cocktail Hayward. Uh, I don't know if they're going to move him to any other crustacean, call him Lobster Hayward or... Gallup Hayward, uh, but, you know, you love the way, um, you know, that kid just came along. Um, I'm calling him a kid, you know, it's a little brother, but um, I just love that, you know, it's not just he's my little brother. He's making his own narrative, and he's continued to just keeps growing, um, and he can he's got a high ceiling. Like, the kid can play, and he wants to be good, plays very good on special teams, Um you know, but, you know, the career doesn't end here. We're always judged for more. And, you know, the question is, how good do you want to be? 
Um, we know you can catch. You're trying to learn how to block. What else can you take into your system? And so, um, man, I can't say enough about what he did this year. Um, he helped win some games. Um, and, you know, he's going to leave his own mark on this game as well. Yeah, it's funny, man. We went to dinner after on Sunday, and I saw y'all talking, and, and I heard the conversation where you're like, the work starts now. You know, you need to give your body some rest, give you a little rest, but then you got to get back to work. So excited to see his career keep going. And like I said, I thought he grew a lot uh, in a tough position because he's, you're right, he is he a little smaller than average tight ends in the league. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, why we call meatball. <laughs> I know. I, yeah, he is like that. Uh, pretty cool stat, though, man. And, and you had mentioned this to me, but I had to go double check it to make sure you were right. You oh, had a wow. sack on the first defensive play of the, of the year and the last defensive play of the year. That's that's not bad to end with ten and a half sacks this year. Yeah, the you know you you start to think about that, and you know, at, on you can check the energy on both of those plays, and they're completely different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first play of the season, you're like, hell yeah, I just got the first sack. We're about to get started. Damn, the last sack, sack of the last game for us. Yeah, I got the sack. I'm tired. Damn, we didn't make the playoffs. And, you know, it, it, it's a cool little thing to be a part of. Um, you know, obviously you want to end up with double-digit sacks um, as an interior guy um, because that is a rarity in itself and it's special. Um, but there should be more on the plate. And, you know, uh, we have to continue to keep working on our craft. And um, I would love for it to be the first defensive play of the of the season and then the last play in the in the Super Bowl. Um but man, we got some work to do. Well and I have to say, you know, as a critic, you know, if you weren't busy committing personal fouls, you'd probably have eleven and a half sacks this year. You know, I mean you could you go ahead and you get the personal foul on Deshaun Watson because you're just undisciplined and you'd have eleven and a half now. We'd have eleven and a half if you didn't just make a bonehead play and sack Deshaun yeah. Watson. Yeah, the bonehead play, wrapping up a quarterback and taking him down. Like, I don't know what else to do. Um, the dude was literally running through tackles, running through tackles the entire game. Um, that's, you know, that's a credit to him. He's a heck of a player. Um, and, but it's not like they were blowing the the ball, the uh, play dead early. You know, it's not like we heard a inadvertent whistle or anything. You know, if there was a whistle blown, shoot, I'll stop. But, man, I got to get this guy on the ground by any means necessary because he's running through tackles. How am I, how else am I supposed to play my game? Um, and so, you know, th those are the questions you ask. Um, you know, I know you could say there was a missed call on another sack, um, but no play should be indicative of the, of the next. And, you know, it, it feels like there's makeup calls throughout a game. And – you can't play football like that. If you play football like that, then shoot, if somebody scores on the first play of the game, are they destined to lose after that? That's just, uh, I don't, I don't know how you, you put the genie back in the bottle. No, the makeup call thing is so dumb to me that, that there's nowhere in the rule book that says the ref owes you one. If they missed one, if they missed one, they missed one. Right. Um, and, and then I'll say this, like we have all this like technology, but like, the personal foul and the unnecessariness of like New York can look at these plays and then you see them making a judgment like like a, a ref could be so involved in the game that they can be emotional or take in what's going on. But you would think New York could have more influence of how to be an arbitrator where they're not just in the middle of a game. That, you know, because it takes points off. The, it puts points on the board. It's not just for my sake of getting a sack, but, man, we're off the field. We're, we're surrendering three, and now we're surrendering seven. That's just – you once you give up – turn once you give up uh, drive extending flags, you know, you check the uh, history on it or check the stats on it, but they're more destined to, to get seven points out of that. Well, no, and you've had that back-to-back -back weeks where they led to points, right? Um, and and so, <coughs> excuse me, you're saying you would almost like the eye in the sky like they use on certain catches and whatnot to be like, hey, that wasn't a rough of the passer. Fourth down, let's move on. You'd like the eye in the sky to maybe even get in, step in on personal fouls and uh, 
Because, because I'll say this. You you look at that Lions game. Who was the one that kicked them out of the game? New York called down into that not, that Lions in uh, Packers game and said, you got to remove that kid. Uh-huh. And so, yes, that's unnecessary roughness there. Why aren't you extending the olive leaf and fixing that when you see those unnecessary roughness when it comes to getting sacks and, you know, protecting our quarterbacks? Yeah, I mean, I'm with you, man. It's definitely – and obviously, I don't I, – I thought it was a bull crap call, too. I'm just giving you a hard time. But you should no, have 11 no. and a half sacks, and, and you should have given up only three on that drive because uh, that was crappy. Also, it would have been three sacks, man, in a game. I don't know how many times you've done that, but that would have been nice to have the final game of the season. Yeah, I like, it's funny. Like, I think before the game, they were showing – like, they always show, like, uh, unique stats. Um, I guess – like I'm thirteen zero and one. We're thirteen zero and one when I get multiple sacks in a game. <laughs> so that's always a good stat. Yeah, uh, that is. That's I didn't realize that. Wow, that's a man. That's a good stat. That's a good. You need to get more sacks, man. We got to get you getting multi sack games. Then I know. I need to pick it up. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I can't lie. I, I we cannot have a show today and not talk about. I was worried you were retiring, but I, I want to read you a quote that you said. You said, you never know if they want me back or not. I start. I say it every year. I would like to be back, but you never know. This is the business side of things. NFL, not for long. I want to be back. I would like to be a Steeler, but you know, you don't know what's going on in the future. Are you retiring? And can you make the announcement of not just football right now that you are retiring? I don't think I'm retiring right now. It's just, damn, I got to give my body time to rest. Um, you know, I think you take in so much throughout the season. And um, I don't ever want to shortchange this. I, I, that's one thing I'll never do. Um, when I do something, I put my whole heart into it. Um, but I have to do what's best for me. I have to do what's best for my family. I have to see if I can play up to a standard that they want as well. Um, I want to keep playing. I want to continue to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. But there's been so many times in my 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 life that guys I've played with have retired. And guys I thought were coming back the next year have retired. Um, I can't play forever. And I understand that. And um, I always have to be ready for that. And I will continue to just uh, learn and keep trying to get better. Um, But it can't just be me. Shoot, the Steelers got to want me back too. Um, And you got to make sure that you're ready for that. You know, I don't think I'll ever be ready for it, but um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to take that for granted. I don't want to rush the process of saying, oh, I'm back. I'll be here for a Steeler. And then, you know, we get to May or June and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a June cut. I'm a July cut. And it's like, oh, damn. Well, he tried to prepare us. You just never know. And I I won't, I want to be back and I want to be at full strength. Yeah, I think that, when I read that, that comment to me was a guy who just understands it's a business and understands how it works. Right. I mean, you've been in this league long enough to know some guys get cut, some guys retire, whatever the case would be that to me, knowing you as well as I do, that was just a, you understand the business, you know, how this goes. You're not taking anything for granted. Yeah. You know, you look at guys like Aaron Rodgers and, um, you know, Randall Cobb walking off the field together. You appreciate those moments because, you don't know if you guys are ever going to be in the same jersey together next year. Um, I look around that room, and because there's so much turnover, there is a draft, there, guys retire, guys get traded. Um, this team will never look the same, and I will never take that for granted because I love every guy in that locker room. And it is a pleasure to go to work with those guys, and those guys make football fun, um, and they – they are part of the reason why I keep playing. Yeah. All right. So, so we're not retiring yet uh, as of now, the off season, but we may revisit this conversation in May. That's what you're saying. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, we, can, we can have it as another topic. Not just all right, football. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll save that for another show. It's the best time of the year. The football playoffs are upon us. Basketball and hockey are in full swing and nothing beats seeing your favorite team live. Make up for lost time and go enjoy a game. Vivid Seats, the official ticketing partner of ESPN, is offering you $10 off your first $100 ticket purchase with code CAM. That's code C-A-M. Download the app or visit vividseats.com today. 
Vivid Seats, Life Happens Live. All right, I want to do a little quick topics here, get you some other stuff that went around the league. Um, all right, well, let's start this. I know you, you're probably not going to watch as much. We've talked about you don't always watch. Give me your Super Bowl favorites, though, the two teams that we'll be playing in February uh, in a couple weeks in mm. Arizona. Um, I'll say it'll probably be Kansas City. Okay. And on the NFC side. Oh man, who is out there right now? So you got. I mean, it's Philly. Philly. You, you're probably gonna go chalk here. It's Philly. It's uh, it, yeah, it's Philly. It's. I mean, do you trust Dallas? Do you trust Tampa Bay? Not really. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't trust Minnesota either personally. I to me, the best team in the NFC is Philly. It's not even really close. If Hurts is healthy, Philly, but this is the thing with Philly. Jalen Hurts has been hurt the last couple of weeks, and when I talk about rhythm. You want to go have rhythm going into the playoffs. Yeah. And, you know, this is another thing for like a team like the Dolphins, whoever, if you ever get to a bad, you're starting like three weeks rusty because you haven't played. And so that can, that can start to play on you. Um, And, you know, you lose that heat that you had in the middle of the season. Um, I'm just trying to think about the other Dolphins. I mean, um, the other uh, NFC teams. I'll tell you who I like, too. And, and I, the quarterback might scare you, but San Francisco's roster and coaching staff is great. And Purdy's kind of giving them the same thing Jimmy G was giving them, right? Mm-hmm. You know, oh, man. That's – I haven't seen enough for them to really judge. I, th- I think that's the only thing holding them back, right? Because, you know, they've done so well in the regular season – that you would think that their defense can continue to keep going on. Um, but let's see. Let's see. Let me look. NFC. Oh, Dark Horse could be. You ready for this? The Cowboys. No, oh, come on, man. Really? Cowboys. You think? Cowboys. I don't even know they're going to get through Tampa Bay on Monday. T- Tampa, you would think, but I just look and I say – Who's got the better defense? And I think Cowboys have the better defense. Um, does Dak finally get it done? You got a good running game in Ezekiel and Tony Pollard. Uh, that could be a very interesting team that, you know, could make their way through the playoffs. And I could see KC versus the Cowboys. Wow. Man, KC versus the Cowboys. That's what you're going to go with. That's the final one. I'll go with that. Let's go. Okay. With that. Wow. That's shocking. Um, I'll say this, man. Just looking at the playoff schedule, that AFC is loaded. Holy it's cow. It the quarterbacks of that division, that conference are, I mean, look at that. That I mean, Herbert, Burrow. Uh, I assume Lamar will be back. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, that AFC, and no, not to disrespect the NFC, it just seems like such a hard road to get there in the AFC. And I'll tell you what, who I like too, who's playing good, Cincinnati. And I know you don't like to hear that as a divisional opponent. They mm-hmm. have been there. They've done that. And I tell you, man, they've really picked up steam the last six weeks of this season where I think that's a team who could easily be playing in February. Well, this is why I see it going in the AFC Championship. You know, if it's Chiefs versus Bengals, Bengals win. But if it's Bills versus Bengals, Bills win. So that that's... I don't even know if that's possible. First of all, I don't. <laughs> I'd have to look to see how it, that would even work. But you just look at those teams, and I just think it comes down to matchups. I think Chiefs versus Bills, it's shoot, it's just run and gun the entire time, and that plays that plays into Casey's favor. And I think you know because I feel like the Bills can score with anybody. It just comes down to who's going to stop who. But I think if it comes to the Bengals and Chiefs, the defense of the Bengals matches up better. And I think the Bengals have enough on offense where they can beat you in a multitude of ways. They can go up top. You you got the receivers, Jamar Chase is on the field, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Yeah, those guys can get it done. But then you can mix it up and say, we're just going to give the mix and let them get rolling. And that's where 
Casey get, I mean, Casey gets into trouble because I think Casey wants want, Casey's got the Casey makes teams fall with fall in love with oh we got to score a million points to win, but if you can really muddy it up and you know it comes down to oh shoot Casey's kicking the ball off I don't know if they're gonna get the ball back that plays into the Bengals hands. Um. No, I mean, I'm with you too, man. Don't underestimate Pirine. They get Pirine involved in the pass game. Like the, the Bengals have, to me, the most balanced skilled attack with Chase. It's Parade, Parade. first of all. It's Parade. Uh, uh, sorry, I apologize. I, I had always said Pirine. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> that guy's good. And and he's their second guy in the backfield. And then Hayden Hurst, too, the tight end. Um, I just I think what Cincinnati has and then the experience of playing the Super Bowl last year, really big for them. Um, all right, one last topic on – uh, for today, and I do want to get your opinion. We did talk your retirement earlier. You are not retiring, but uh, yeah. we watched that game Sunday night together, the Lions Packers game, and I think we had different opinions on what was happening after that game. Do you think Rodgers is done? I don't know if he's done. I, I like I could see him being done, just because it doesn't look like like he's going to lose his guy Randall Cobb. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't seem like they really want to build around them. Like, you know, they they don't spend first round picks on wide receivers and they're not bringing in wide receivers. Um, you know, and you look at some of those passes he threw last, that, that night, they were on the money, uh-huh. on the money. And you're just thinking, man, if Devontae Adams was still there, whoo, they'd be in the playoffs right now. And you know it. It's it's going to be interesting, but I don't think it's his last game. But I could totally see it happening. Let me ask you this: better chance he retires or he's on a new team next year? New team. Wow. Okay. Now, before we do that, before we leave here, who do you think would he would go to, or where do you think would be the best fit for Aaron Rodgers? The best fit going to Vegas. Could you imagine him going to Vegas to join Devontae Adams? Wow, that would be weird. That would be weird, man. But I've heard Brady going to Vegas potentially. Right. And so I think it's who can get there faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Um, uh, the Jets are another team that I would say. The Jets are a quarterback away to me that if they can get a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers or whoever, they got a shot as well. So I think the Jets and what I've just read, I think they want a really mobile quarterback um, a younger quarterback, and I think they want Lamar Jackson. Um, you know, I, I could see them trying to, you know, it's not me reading the message boards. Let's get that straight. Like, I'm just just seeing stuff. But, um, you know, I think everybody's going to want Lamar Jackson. And, you know, I don't even know if he plays in the playoffs, but going into this offseason, if you don't play Lamar, you're going to have to trade him because you're not going to get anything back for him. And, you know, Tyler Huntley has done a great job, but do you want to trade your MVP winning quarterback to anybody, even the AFC? And so it's going to have to be a sweet deal to really part with him. Yeah, but it's going to be a sweet deal. You ain't it, getting Lamar Jackson without multiple first round picks. And I, I, I man, the, Lamar and Baltimore with that rushing attack, when Brees Hall comes back, whew, they're going to be fun if they got him. So uh, with the Jets, so. I don't know. Interesting to see, and I appreciate your commentary. You're not retiring. That's official, and you don't think Aaron Rodgers is either. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't think – I actually – yeah, I think Aaron's playing for a different team. I think I'm still playing for the same team. Um, okay, good. We'll leave it at that. All right, good. All right, Wait, ready? you're not going to end it with the not just football favorite question? Are you ready for it? Where is it? Wait, what? Oh, no, you're not ready. All right, what are, what's not just football's favorite question? I didn't even see that. Where the heck's that at? Well, the question is, what is my favorite part of the beginning of the offseason? Um, at the beginning of the offseason, I don't know if there's a favorite part. I'm going to be honest, guys. <laughs> like yeah, You're miserable. You are miserable at the beginning of the Yeah, offseason. usually I, I'm, like, picking up my Marvel event, Marvel stuff and, like, like, I just go into, like, I hunker down. Um, I hide... Um, if you see me at a giant eagle, please don't say hi because I'm embarrassed. 
uh, I am like trying to not make eye contact with anybody because I feel like I let the whole city down because we're not in the playoffs. We didn't win a Super Bowl. Um, you know, I take it personally. Um, but I would say my favorite part is probably um, just reconnecting with my children um, and my wife, um, finding time for them again. Uh, they all make big sacrifices of me not being around. Um, I just got asked to uh, be a coach at a, my son's basketball league. Whew, that's going to be fun. Um, are you, wait, are you doing that? I'm thinking about it. I, I'm up Man. In- I would love to do a live show or something like that from one of Cal's games, and we get inter- you interview you in between quarters and stuff, like uh, like they do with Popovich. We need to do a poll and just ask: <laughs> Does Cam need to be coaching Cal's basketball team? Yes, yes, one hundred percent. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, but I, I, th- I think I'm looking forward to that. Um, getting some vacation time, um, trying to get a tan again because I'm looking kind of light. Um, you look pale. I do. I look yeah, pale. I noticed that this weekend in person, you look even paler. It's weird. It is. It is. I need to get my beach body back. Um, and you know, uh, you know, just I gotta jump back on that saddle again and start working out. Got to stay on my Pilates. Uh, Got to stay on getting better at my pass rush. Finding little things in my game. Um, you know, get I get to be a dad and take my daughter to school a little bit more. Um, you know, all these little things. Uh, I get to take the dogs for walks more. Um, it sounds kind of depressing, but <laughs> it, I, I look forward to that. And It just sounds know. boring. It just sounds boring compared to, like, what, what y'all's life is. Like, it just feels like that's just boring. Uh, but it's great. It's but I think boring. It's, boring. it's boring. It's like I get to take a pause and, like, take a deep breath. Um, you know, we are in a league where it's like, go, 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 go. And now I just get to literally like sit back um, and, you know, reconnect with everybody. Um, Because like, you know, Mike T talks so much about like cutting your eyelids off and I feel like they've been off. And so I gotta, I gotta find a way to regrow my eyelids. Cause like, (laughs) I'm like, I've been, my eyes have been bloodshot and I haven't been able to like really just be a person. I'm, I'm a robot when it comes to the season. You know, I thrive off of like having like a schedule and having things to do and, but you can't, I can't live like that. Like, you know, and so I got to re refine myself in that. You think you'll watch any of the playoff games? I'm sure you'll text me and then I'll turn it off. <laughs> yeah, that's probably how it goes. Honestly. It, it is at this point. Cause I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I am, I'm jealous. I'm jealous of everybody in the playoffs. And so you know, I'll probably be at the Super Bowl uh, doing some stuff for Walter Payton Man of the Year. Uh, and we might be doing some stuff with the Walter Payton. Um, not at the Walter Payton Man of the Year, but around Super Bowl. So everybody stay tuned for that. But um, I'm, I think, you know, it, it's hard when you put so much into your craft and you want to be very good at it. But then you don't get the, you know, the goal you want at the end. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. And obviously a totally different level, but like, Last night, it was hard to even watch the national championship game, knowing a team you even root for was that close to even be there. So, like, I didn't even want to watch that. So, I can't imagine putting it all out there and then having to watch all the other guys kind of go have fun in the playoffs. So, I understand that. Yeah. You know, I think it's like, okay, I'll I'll put it this way. It's like, you know, you save up so much money to buy, you know, the, the best gift as a kid. And then you're like, okay, I've got, I'm missing, like, like one dollar, your mom gives you the dollar, and so you want to go to the store, but they're all sold out. Yeah, and you're like, so when is it coming back? And it's like, oh, it won't be back till like spring. And you're like, come on, man! Like, like it's just you know, you you spent so much, like you were mowing your lawn, you were taking out the trash, you were getting all, you were doing everything right to try to get to the point where you buy that special toy or something, but you weren't able to get it done. You weren't able to get what you wanted. Um, and now you got to wait some time to even have another opportunity to get what you want. I know, man, it's a tough one, but you got to get ready for next season. And I think the future is bright. So hopefully next year, this time we're having a playoff preview for you and not a, uh, not a end of the season and how the season went. Thanks, Miss Cleo. I appreciate that. Tara reading. 
All right, guys. Well, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. We'll have some more episodes in the off season. We'll get to talk some more stuff, football, um, not just football stuff as well. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in, listening in, and we'll see you next time.